Welcome to Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church in downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hello, I'm Frenchie McGee, Associate Pastor. Welcome to worship. It's Worldwide Communion Sunday, and I hope that you have your elements assembled, your juice and bread. If not, you still have time to do that before we share in the sacrament, which today reminds us of the fellowship of God's family of all people, all races, in all cultures. It's a wonderful multicultural celebration, and so you are invited to share in the sacrament. To help today's worship, please download the worship guide. The worship guide contains the songs, prayers, and other information that will help you connect with the Spirit as God speaks to you during today's worship service. Remember, whoever you are and wherever you've come from, you are a part of God's family, and you are welcome at God's table. Welcome to Hennepin. Welcome to worship. Holy, holy, holy. Please join me in our responsive litany by speaking your part, which will appear in bold type. We praise the God of all nations and peoples, whose mercy extends to the ends of the earth. Who are my siblings, my cohort in this world? They who walk in the way of Christ. Who is my family, they who dwell in God's house. We are many members, but one body. People of God, the table is set, the world is waiting. We raise our voices in a song of praise.
The grace of confession is offered to us so that there would be no barriers separating us from God's love, not even those which we would erect ourselves. Please join me in this morning's prayer of confession. God of compassion and mercy, we are your wounded and wounding children. We bring our wounded selves, our divided society, and our broken world, seeking your healing and transforming grace. It is easy for us to point the finger at others, yet we know that we all need your forgiveness. So we lift into your presence today not only the victims of conflicts, but those we have called enemies. Break down the walls of hatred, distrust, and bitterness, and open a way for us to reach one another in truth and love. Enable us to build a society where all can belong, to share our gifts in mutual respect, and to seek for the new future which you offer us through Jesus the Christ, we pray. We offer now to God the prayers of our hearts as we pray in silence. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, God was reconciling the world. Jesus Christ is God with humankind. He is the eternal son of the creator who became human and lived among us to fulfill the work of reconciliation. God is present in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit to continue and complete God's mission. Therefore, the church calls all people to be reconciled to God and one another. As God's forgiven people, let's share the peace of God with each other. The peace of God be with you and also with you. Did you see how beautiful they were making the communion table? It made me want to get out some of my pretty dishes too. Why is it that sometimes, instead of our regular meal time, we do something that feels kind of fancy? We get out things that are special. When do you do that in your household? In our household, Usually it means that someone very special is coming over for dinner or we're celebrating some sort of a very special occasion. And that's kind of what we're doing at church today. 
Today is World Communion Sunday. And on World Communion Sunday, it's special because we are reminded that Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church is not the only group of Christian people who celebrate communion together. There are people all over the world who on this very day are having the exact same ritual and the exact same type of Holy Communion that we are celebrating today. And I think it's really special to think that we're not alone in being the ones that are trying to be more and more like Jesus every day. And we're not alone in trying to make our corners of the world be a little bit more like Jesus and God would want them to be. There are millions of people all over our world who are trying to do the same things that we are trying to do. And sometimes it feels really great to be reminded that we're not alone in our efforts. Let's pray. Holy One, we know that with you we are never alone. But it's sometimes great to be reminded that there are Christians all over this world who are committed to being more and more like Jesus every single day. In your name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from the first letter of John, the third chapter, verses 18 through 24. I'll be reading from the message, a scripture paraphrase, by Eugene Peterson. My dear children, let's not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. This is the only way we'll know we're living truly, living in God's reality. It's also the way to shut down debilitating self-criticism, even when there is something to it. For God is greater than our worried hearts and knows more about us than we do ourselves. And friends, once that's taken care of, and we're no longer accusing or condemning ourselves, we're bold and free before God. We're able to stretch our hands out and receive what we asked for, because we're doing what he said, doing what pleases him. Again, this is God's command, to believe in his personally named son, Jesus Christ. He told us to love each other in line with the original command. As we keep his commands, we live deeply and surely in him, and he lives in us. And this is how we experience his deep and abiding presence in us, by the spirit he gave us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you again in the name of the Holy One. Let's pray. God, we are grateful beyond measure to be in your presence together as a community. Speak to us now, not only through the words of scripture and through the words of my mouth, but speak to us through the inspiration of your spirit. And as you guide us into being beloved community, as you challenge us to remake and remold structures that reflect your love. Give us courage. Give us strength. Give us joy. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, 
Welcome again to those of you who are just joining this service. It is indeed a joy to be in worship. We are in the midst of the series, Dismantling Racism, Pressing On to Freedom. And the book that we're using from the Bible, the biblical book, is the book of 1 John. The letter of 1 John, the little Greek word epistle, means letter. If you haven't read it, I encourage you to read it. It's very short, only six chapters. And if you are reading and following along, you know that it reads like a letter from a parent to a group of children. So often in this letter, the writer uses the phrase, my dear children, my little children, little children, I write to you, even though at times he acknowledges that this is certainly an intergenerational group of disciples, an intergenerational group of people coming together, discovering the power of the message of Jesus in their lives, and what it meant to help them navigate through that community of change, through that community of diversity, and through a community, yes, that was filled with many, many social challenges and even oppression. And so we are using this letter to guide us as we think again of the challenge to answer the call and the cry for social justice that has resonated throughout our nation, particularly since the 25th of May when George Floyd was killed here in Minneapolis by former policeman um, Derek Chauvin. John, the writer, also has several themes in this little letter. And one of those themes is love. How do we practice love? Or the question might be, what does love look like on the ground? How does the message and the love of God expressed and seen in the person of Jesus Christ affect his followers? How does it change their thinking how does it reshape their sense of themselves in the world? And how does it then enable them to live in a world and call for change? That is so much a part of the short scripture we just heard read that I want to pick up a few parts of it again for you to make note of. At the very beginning, the writer says, let's not just talk about love, let's practice real love. Now, if you are listening to this and you are a fan of the hip-hop artist Mary J. Blige, the wonderful, great, now iconic Mary J. Blige, you know that one of her hits was the song, Real Love. I'm looking for some real love, someone to make my heart sing, real love that transforms the life. And so the writer picks that up and saying, let's not just talk about love, real love, let's practice it. The other theme that we will hear really clearly from the text is that there is a kind of self-negating way of being in the world, which is antithetical to the message of Jesus. And that message that antithetical message can, in fact, cause us to become so shut down as individuals, as humans, that we are actually imprisoned in our own misery. And that misery begins to resonate in our structures. And as it resonates in our structures, we find ourselves unable to actually live in the love that Jesus calls for. There are one or two things I'd like you to make note of. And again, if you've got a notebook or a pencil and paper and you've been following along, or perhaps you're making notes on your bulletin that you've downloaded from haumc.org, you will notice the words, this is God's command and the original command. Those are cues to us to look back to the gospel of John to see what they are. And really quickly, I will say to you that God's command to believe in God's son, Jesus, takes us back to God's affirmation of Jesus at Jesus's baptism. When God says, this is my beloved son, my beloved child in whom I am well pleased, listen 
to him. And the reminder that the original command found in the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament in the Shema is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And Jesus would add later on that the second commandment is like that, to love your neighbor as yourself. The gift of the Spirit that came to the first believers, that came to the church as it spread out from the small Jerusalem community and then became a worldwide community, was animated by those concepts of love, by that idea of loving God and neighbor. And they have shaped theology, they have shaped community, they have shaped church from then on, they are a central tenant to Methodist thinking and to Methodist way of being in the world. And often you will hear that love of God and love of neighbor is at the core of what it means to be Methodist. Well, today is not just about being Methodist. Today is about finding that love of God and love of neighbor in the worldwide fellowship we share with all Christians because it is Worldwide Communion Sunday. And so how do we then narrate this question of dismantling racism, pressing on to freedom through the lens, through the eyes of love, through the eyes that would say, if we cannot love each other, how can we come to the table together? I want you to remember that we often say that the most segregated hour in America is 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. That black churches and white churches, black communities of faith, and white communities of faith are celebrating the same sacrament, sharing in many cases the same liturgy, the same words, the same hymns, but doing it apart from one another. And as we think of the question of dismantling racism, looking at the very heart of those systematic leanings that have engendered this separation, this segregation, it's important for us to remember that the search for love, the search for community, the search for fellowship and family that is found in our congregations is in fact part of the search for love. It is no accident that we are segregated. We are segregated because systemic racism infected the Christian church in America. And instead of calling for a liberating movement of love that found the people of God gathering in spite of race, America's churches very early on embraced a racialized ideology that saw them pushing for and reflecting the temperament that found the people of God celebrating again same sacraments in separate situations. The historical development of black churches and black organizations within predominantly white churches like Black Methodists for Church Renewal was motiva motivated by the desire of black people to find a sense of human dignity and human equality and community in a dominant setting that was denied and prevented to them. Both institutions embodying white supremacist ideology and the social patterns of slavery and segregation adopted and acted affirmatively toward slave ownership, toward restricting the patterns of interaction for its members, and as it pervaded the community, black persons, enslaved and free, sought to find that sense of community, both visibly and invisibly, spontaneous and formal. And that mirrored the life of the early church. The early church was not an open organization. In many cases, the early church, the first century church, found itself meeting in homes and meeting in secret, pushed out of the synagogues, pushed underneath the dominant social structures of the day. It sought to be a place of community and liberation for its members. 
Hence, again, the idea that we practice real love, that we practice within the church, within the structures, a kind of love that sees us meeting around the table of God, sharing the love feast, sharing the meal that Jesus left, sharing the language that Jesus left, sharing the love that Jesus left that moved beyond Socio sociological characteristics and moved beyond those categories that we would call race, class, creed, and color. And so today, as we think of worldwide communion and as we look especially at where we are now in 2020 in America, particularly with our community, with our churches, remember that we are on a quest not simply to break down sociological structures, not simply to re-narrate political structures, not simply even to upend economic structures, but we are on a quest as the children of God to be the people of God, committed to being the living sign of the unity of human community that God is writing in the hearts of people everywhere in the world. And so, friends, our commitment to justice, our commitment to peace, our commitment to the freedom of all people is a commitment to a new civilization of love. It is a commitment to a fundamental perspective where the church does not simply celebrate communion, but the church itself is communion. The church itself is the living communion, the living embodiment of God's intention for all of humanity. In making Christ the source of that love, in making Christ the embodying presence, the incarnate presence of that love, God calls forth a liberating new identity. And those of us who meet around the table insist that, again, this vision of inclusive community based on reconciliation between God and humanity must be lived out by those of us who gather at the table of God. Jesus' table is open to everyone because the spirit of the universal Christ is the gift for everyone. Howard Thurman says it this way, God's inclusive community harbors all races, all classes, all faith claims, and all ethnic groups, for in the eyes of God, every human being is God's beloved child. And every human being is called to a place at the table. And therefore, every human being is called to the liberating, transforming work which you and I are now engaged in as we talk openly of creating a place for all people, not simply practicing resistance to racism, injustice, and oppression, but actively disrupting them actively being innovative in our thinking, innovative in our practices, innovating in our liberating love for each other so that we become, again, a visible sign, a visible symbol of the liturgy that we share at the communion table. The Reverend James Cone, Dr. James Cone, reminds us that the church is that people called into being by the power and love of God to share in God's revolutionary activity for the liberation of humanity. The church is people who have been seized, captured by the Holy Spirit. And so the church has no will of its own. It has only God's will. It has no duty of its own. It's only God's duty. Its existence is grounded in God, and therefore it cannot be bounded by standards of race or class or occupation. That indeed is what the writer of John is saying to us when he says, practice real love. Practice real love that frees you. Practice real love that frees all of us. Practice real love that enables us to keep 
the commandments of God and recognize and celebrate the presence of the Spirit among us. In a few moments, you and I will share in the sacrament with God's children around the world. And as we do know that the words we say, the prayers that we utter, the elements that we lift are more than just the simple things we see. They are the spiritual sustenance for us as we take on the task of liberating ourselves, of liberating our structures, of being the community that accomplishes what it preaches, of being the community that conducts the good news of God and carries it to all people in all nations, that the liberating language and life of the Lord is present now among us. This, this is the gift of communion. This is the joy of communion. This is the strength we need in order to stay in the struggle that awaits us. This is the captivating, courageous presence of communion. We are not simply taking and receiving the elements, receiving the sacrament. My brothers and sisters, my siblings in Christ, as we celebrate, we become the sacrament. For we become the very body of Christ. And each one of you, each one of us, carries within us the life of the living God, the spirit of the living God, which calls us to embrace our God-given task and God-given ability to not simply proclaim freedom, to not simply live ethically, but to be the change that we desire to see, to be the embodiment of love. As you receive the elements today, I pray with you and for you that the Spirit of Christ would strengthen your courage, that the Spirit of Christ would give you the conviction to work for justice, that the Spirit of Christ would give you the capacity for sharing, for embodying real, disruptive, liberating love. And together, may that love that we embody and share turn the world right side up for Jesus. In the name of God, our creator and loving parent, in the name of Jesus, our brother and friend and embodiment of love, and in the name of the liberating Holy Spirit, which calls us to freedom. Amen. Friends, through your generosity, Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church continues to provide tangible expressions of love and digital opportunities for worship and learning. As an expression of worship, you can send a check to 511 Groveland Avenue, 55403, or you can contribute through our website, or text your gift following the instructions on your screen. However you feel led to join in these ministries, thank you for your generosity. You may recognize the melody of our offertory this morning, the French carol known as Picardy, to which we most commonly sing the words, let all mortal flesh keep silence. In today's lyrics, 
we are reminded that we find a profound unity and love through the bread and cup. Friends, it is now time to share in the Holy Meal of Holy Communion with our neighbors around the world. Make sure that you have your juice and your bread ready as we begin to prepare our hearts for the Sacrament of Holy Communion. In the silence of the morning, as the new day dawned around the world today, God's people began to gather for worship amid the sounds of drums, pipes, strings, organs, and now we, too, join in this worldwide chorus of those who call upon the name of the Lord. On this World Communion Sunday, we remember especially that the scriptures are fulfilled as people will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. So come, not because you must, but because you may. Come, not because you are strong, but because you seek God's strength. All are invited to come and join in the feast that God has prepared. Among friends gathered around the table, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Later, after they had eaten, he took a cup of juice and said, This cup is God's new relationship, made possible by my life and death. And whenever you drink it, do it in remembering me. So now, Following Jesus' example, we take this bread and cup, for in them Jesus has promised to be with us, making us whole, making us one. And in celebration of Christ's goodness, let us give thanks. O living God, for your blessing and creation, for your image deep within us, for your life in all its fullness, we give you thanks. O oh, Jesus, our brother, for your coming to earth, calling of us as your friends, for your sharing of our life and death, we give you thanks. O oh, Spirit of grace and truth, for revealing yourself in community, healing us in our brokenness and inspiring us with courage to share, we give you thanks. O oh, Trinity of love, 
for the promise of a spreading tree giving shade and protection, for the vision of a body in which each part works for the health of the whole, for the invitation to a feast where the despised will be guests of honor. We give you thanks. Friends, as we pray now for the world, when you have opportunity, you may name names where you are or pray silently in your heart. Let us pray. God of justice and peace, we stand with those and you stand with those who are poor. Now, we call upon you for those who suffer the injustice of violence and want. In prayer, spoken and unspoken, we name them. We call upon you for those who carry heavy burdens. We call upon you for those we love and those who love us. Where shall we go from your spirit? And how could we be away from your presence? If darkness covers us and night closes in on us, you are there. For the night is not dark for you, but luminous as the day, and the two are one to you. Where shall we go from your spirit? Your presence is there and here and everywhere. Spirit of the living God, present with us now, breathe in us and on these gifts of bread and wine, that sharing your blessing and your broken life, we may share in your continual presence and reality, and together, as your body, remain in your love. In the name of Christ, who taught us to pray. 하늘에 계신 우리 아버지여, 이름이 거룩히 여김을 받으시오며, 나라 임하옵시며, 뜻이 하늘에서 이루어진 것 같이 땅에서도 이루어지이다. 오늘날 우리에게 일용할 양식을 주옵시고, 우리가 우리에게 죄진 자를 사여 준것 같이, 우리 죄를 사여 주옵시고, 우리를 시험에 들지 말게 하옵시며, 다만 악에서 구하옵소서, 대개 나라와 권세와 영광이 아버지께 영원히 있사옵나이다. 아멘. Look, here is your Lord coming to you in bread and juice. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Мир вам, дорогие братья и сестры. Мы рады быть сегодня с вами. И если мы вместе обратимся к Богу в молитве о своих нуждах, Он обязательно даст нам ответ. Давайте будем одним целым, что есть тело Христова, потому что в единстве наша сила. Помолимся. Дорогой Господь, мы молимся за Твою Святую Вселенскую Церковь, которую Ты желаешь наполнить своей истинной миром. Позволь нам всем вместе возрастать в познании нашего Господа и Спасителя Иисуса Христа. Благодарим Тебя за то, что мы Твои дети, и Ты заботишься о нас. Даруй нам свет Твой и истину, чтобы они направляли нас своим Иисуса Христа. Позволь любви Твоей окружить больных и немощных. Во время продолжающейся пандемии помоги нам не быть разделенными вирусом и социальными обстоятельствами, но еще крепче объедини нас силой Твоего Святого Духа. Пусть имя Твое будет еще больше прославлено во всех концах земли, в нашем единстве через Дух Христов. Мы молились во имя Твое, который есть Господь всего мира. Аминь. friends, if you found yourself inspired by any part of today's worship and you are ready to begin practicing real love, there's so many opportunities and so many ways that you can do it. Here are a few that you just might want to take advantage of. The Dignity Center Fall Fundraiser will be this Tuesday at 6 o'clock at noon. It is the first virtual fundraiser because, of course, we're still living in the pandemic and we're still being acted asked to practice compassionate caring withdrawal or what other people like to refer to as social distancing. But you'll want to be a part of the fall fundraiser. You can do that by going to thedignitycenter.org, all one word, thedignitycenter.org, to register. And Wednesday, the very first meeting of our fall session for Disciple begins. Disciple enables you to know scripture for yourself and to begin to use and understand scripture as you shape your life practicing real love and making change, turning the world right side up for God. Disciple is free and you can register at haumc.org events. 
You can also register. You'll find all of our events there. But if you love movies and if you love family movies, you are invited to the Outdoor Family Movie Night in the Ministry House Black Yard. The film will be Black Panther. And I know you may have seen it by now, but really, isn't it worth seeing it again with some wonderful friends in the Ministry House backyard? You can RSVP if you would please RSVP at haumc.org slash events. On the 18th of October, Raising White Kids, discussion session for families and for people who work with children begins. It's led by Becky Bolin and Taylor Reeb, and it's an opportunity to have some grounding in how we have conversations with our youngest community members about liberating love for all people. Believe me, they are aware of what's going on in the world, and many of them are ahead of us in their openness to the Spirit of God working in their life. You'll want to be able to talk with them, and when they ask you the hard questions, you want to be prepared to answer it with joy and with compassion from a very centered, loving place. And you can do that by participating in the Raising White Kids discussion. Please go to haumc.org for links to all events, opportunities to live, love, learn, and serve together as we make change for good. Now, it has been a wonderful time of being together in God's presence. And as we prepare to leave each other, I encourage you to look for those places where real love is present and practiced in your life. And remember, whoever you are, wherever you are, and wherever you go when we leave this sacred time together, you are a part of God's family. You have a place at God's table. And you are part of God's liberating love in the world. May that knowledge anchor you. May that knowledge challenge you. May that knowledge sustain and bless you, not only today, but all the days of your life. Go now to love God, to love your neighbor, and to serve Christ in the world. Amen.